Hello there, fellow monster hunters, and welcome back to the Witcher Bestiary. This is a series where we take a look at the creatures, monsters, and other entities from the universe of the Witcher. Today we shall once again branch out into yet another category of creatures, this time the ones called Elementa, or Elementals. However, there is an interesting distinction to be made between today's actual topic, obviously the ones in the title, Golems and Gargoyles, and actual Elementa or Elementals. To clear out any confusion, I think it's only proper to explain what Elementa actually are in this setting. In a nutshell, Elementa are beings or entities from various planes of existence. In the case of these particular beings, their dimensions are known as Elemental or Para-Elemental planes. As you might imagine, there are four big ones, the plane of air, inhabited by the Jinn, the plane of earth inhabited by the Tao, the plane of fire inhabited by the Ifrits, and the plane of water inhabited by the Marids. This brings us to another category related to the Elementa called Constructs. You see, when an Ifrit or a Tao, for example, comes into the human world or is brought by a wizard and start animating a hunk of stone, those are examples of Constructs. I think that is where most of the confusion comes from, because these possessed, for lack of a better word, animated stone giants, are also called earth elementals and fire elementals, in the case of the Ifrits and the Tao. But the beings themselves are not the same thing as the animated constructs, they are simply possessing them, like I said. All that out of the way, today's topics, the golem and the gargoyle, are also from the construct category. But these two, unlike the others mentioned, are not inhabited by entities from those planes of existence. Golems and gargoyles are simply animated via magic via the efforts of a mage. Last but not least, if you want to get technical, earth and fire elementals can also count as golems, but they are not, you know, OG golems. I hope that explanation didn't actually confuse you further. I'm not gonna go into more detail on Elementa today, as I want to explain those better in a separate episode. Which finally brings us to today's first of the animated constructs, the famous Golem. Now, the Golem, if you know anything about mythical creatures and such, you will know that they are far from a unique concept to the Witcher. But unlike the actual real world stories and mythology, the Witcher Golems are a bit different and maybe more in tone with the ones from Warcraft, for example. There's multiple golems throughout the Witcher games, some simply as regular enemies, others part of quests, and others bosses and mini-bosses. What is more or less uniform in their depiction, though, is the fact that they have a guardian role more often than not. Funnily enough, as far as Witchers in general are concerned, contracts involving a golem are considered a bit of a pain in the ass. That's because, unlike most monsters, golems are obviously made of solid rock, and defeating them requires more than just killing the creature itself, as you would a ghoul or a drowner or something else. A much more concise description of the golem comes from the journals. To quote, Golems are mindless matter brought to life by a spell. Their boundless strength, ability to withstand pain, endless patience, and the fact that they don't need any food or drink makes them the best servant or guard one could ask for. Once provoked, they will not tire of battle until they have either crushed their opponent or they themselves are turned to dust. Defeating a golem can be extraordinarily difficult. For obvious reasons, it does not bleed. It feels neither fear nor mercy, and it is invulnerable to fire or poison. What's more, a golem's body is as hard as the rock it is sometimes made of so often a silver blade will not even dent it. The monster's only weakness is acid. A blade covered in acrid oil can thus increase one's chances for victory. Golems do not use any weapons, for they have no need. Their fists, weighing hundreds of pounds each, can crush solid granite with one hit. A blow from a golem should thus be avoided at all costs. There is no shield which can stop it, nor sword which can parry it. That is no easy task, for these creatures are able to move with surprising speed considering their bulk. Luckily, their enormous mass means they are not very agile. 
Once a golem begins a charge, it cannot stop quickly. A fact an experienced witcher can use to their advantage. Another colorful description comes from an actual in-universe book. Once upon a time, an absent-minded mage created a golem, animated it by casting Alzer's Thunder, and ordered a new servant to fetch water, before burying himself in his scholarly books. The golem kept carrying water day and night without pause, and ultimately flooded not only the mage's house, but the entire town. As you can see, my young students of the art, Improper use of tools and a lack of elementary training may cause a tragedy. A golem is a huge creature brought to life magically with the help of a special invocation, a spell or a ritual. Deprived of reason, he will blindly obey the will of the creator. There are aspects which differentiate a golem from earlier mentioned elementals though. Those do have self-awareness to some degree, although it is almost always suppressed by the sorcerer's spells. A golem can be a piece of roughly hewn stone, mortar and clay, animated by the power of magic through the obsidian heart which is placed by the sorcerer inside the golem's chest. Magicians who create such creatures rarely have the talent of a sculptor, and generally little care about the aesthetic aspect of their creation. Instead they focus on functionality, because first of all the golem is obliged to work and protect its master and his property. Usually such a creature copes with its jobs with impeccable accuracy, sometimes bordering on the comical. As quoted a minute ago, they will take commands quite literally, so you gotta be careful what you actually ask them to do. Golems will move slowly, unnaturally and stiffly, but they do have great strength and are mighty opponents. Ironically, in some circumstance, the strong electrical charge that brought the creature to life, so to speak, can also shut it down though. Golems can even be programmed, for lack of a better word, by sufficiently powerful mages. In fact, there is one particular golem in The Witcher 2 which can talk and even reason to a certain degree. Properly fighting a golem can be a tricky business. To quote, Do not attempt to parry the punches delivered by the golem. The sheer weight and power behind them renders such thinking suicidal at best. A charging golem cannot be easily stopped, but a clever witcher can use this to their advantage. Roll out of the golem's path and then strike. The sign of Yirdan is useful when going toe to toe with a golem, but do remember that a golem will only be slowed, not rendered helpless. As with elementals, a golem can pound the ground with such ferocity that anyone standing nearby will be knocked on their ass. Surprisingly enough, a fully developed whirl attack combined with the effects of the Thunderbolt Potion and Elementa Oil can in fact devastate a golem, as the size of the creature will prevent it from evading Geralt's attack. Elementa Oil, in case you're wondering, is made from dog tallow and puffball. Our second creature of today can be considered, in my opinion anyway, a cousin of the golem, since they do share the same nature and some other traits. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the gargoyle. If I were to describe the gargoyle in a nutshell myself, I would say they're the shorter, chubbier and more detailed version of the golem. But they do stand out a little bit as well with some unique abilities and aspects. To quote, In times long gone, when youth was more polite, everything was cheaper and girls were more eager, Sorcerers could breathe life into inanimate matter and create stone servants that way. Gargoyles, for them I have in mind, can be found in ancient cities to this very day. But their magic has now vanished, and they are nothing more than cornice decorations. There are, however, exceptions, such as the Lokmuin gargoyles, still enchanted and still very dangerous. Theoreticists of magic still argue about classifying gargoyles to this very day. I favor the school claiming they are a type of golem. For gargoyles are nothing more than fancy sculptures animated by magic and programmed to do simple tasks. They can complete only the most rudimentary of work. So often they are found guarding a territory even if their creator turned to dust a long time ago. The gargoyle is a magical creature and often has surprising tricks up its sleeve. Teleportation, for example. 
An opponent makes a blow and the gargoyle disappears only to emerge elsewhere at the same moment. Such as behind the enemy. It's even worse when the gargoyle appears on top of the opponent. Then it will simply fall down and crush the victim beneath the weight of its stone body. Thanks to their medallions, witchers can perceive disturbances in magical aura, so they will see the point where the gargoyle will materialize a moment before it does so, so they do have a time to react. However, ordinary people will tend to die crushed. Fighting the gargoyle means fighting solid rock, so it should not be surprising that poison is useless, as are fire and oils causing bleeding. Because of its great mass, the gargoyle's stone body cannot be unbalanced, let alone knocked down. Immobilizing one with a trap will fail, as gargoyles can teleport and will flee snares using that ability. However, unlike golems, gargoyles have more or less the same appearance and are always made in the shape of statues. Maybe that is part of the tradition, or the geometric shape necessary for the spell or rune to work. I gotta say, personally, I do find gargoyles a lot creepier than the golems. I mean, with the golem you kinda know what you're getting. But gargoyles actually have faces. And since they are used as statues in many places, you never know when one is gonna come to life and attack you. They are considerably shorter than the golem, but that doesn't mean you should underestimate them. They do in fact possess many more abilities and attacks than the golem. To quote, A gargoyle is nearly as sturdy as any earth elemental, but significantly faster, more versatile, and seemingly even more intelligent. Melee attacks of a gargoyle may not have the same reach, but they cannot be parried. Evade them at all costs. The sign of Yirdan will slow a gargoyle down, making it a bit easier to evade their melee attacks, and allow a witcher to strike back. Do not linger in front of a gargoyle for long. They can counter aggressive witchers by using their poisonous breath. The safety of range is fleeting when fighting a gargoyle. They can not only throw rocks with great accuracy and power, but they can leap into the air and crash down atop or next to a witcher with terrifying speed. Both these attacks can stun a victim. A gargoyle can also stomp the ground with such force that they can blind nearby threats. That stomp in particular is one of the most dangerous attacks if you're at close range. Due to the gargoyle's considerable size and weight, the art sign, as mentioned, is useless against them. As beings made of stone, they feel neither pain nor the threat of fire, meaning that the ignis sign is also worthless. It is a witcher's good fortune that they do have some weaknesses as well. They do feel the sting of a silver blade and are hurt by dimeridium bombs which can disrupt the workings of the magic spell giving them life to begin with. Elemental oil is also a good idea. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the golems and gargoyles, and a bit about Elementa for today. And speaking of Elementa, I will definitely return to them and do one or two videos on them. It's just that the entire category is a bit confusing to navigate, because of the confusion I mentioned in the beginning. There's also the fact that the uh, Jinn, for example, aka air elementals, are entirely different from fire and earth ones, which can take a golem-like form. The Jinns, on the other hand, do not. And water elementals don't even exist in the games. Anyway, as always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on golems and gargoyles in the comments below. If you enjoyed this episode or found it informative, please consider the series by watching to the end, checking the other playlist videos, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks a lot, and Melitale's blessings be upon you.